Hello, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In my previous video, I introduced you to Mini Tools Shadow Maker, a program used to back up your computer in the event that a failure occurs. In this video, we're going to help you create the first backup. Now, the first backup is very important because you want to back up everything that is contained on the drive. So in the event that something goes wrong with your computer, whether it's Windows that crashes or your hard drive fails, you can rest assured that you'll be able to restore your backup and all your data back onto your new computer or to your new hard drive. Create your first backup. What we're going to do is click the backup icon and you're going to see the source on the left. Uh, this is the primary source of all the data that's going to be backed up. On the right is the destination. This is where the image and the backup is going to be stored. Now, as a rule of thumb, you do not want to create a backup on the same drive as a source. Because if something was to go wrong during the backup process, there's a very good chance that you may lose your data. So you always want to either use an external drive or a flash drive that has the plenty of space to store the backup. On the left, you'll see it shows the amount of data that's going to be uh, needed. You're going to see the partitions that's going to be backed up. And on the right, you're going to see the destination folder. This is the space that is free. As you can see, I have less than one terabyte of, two, of a two terabyte drive. And this is going to be the location where the backup will be stored. Now, this is going to always be, pick your primary drive, and that's going to be drive C. Now, the first thing you want to do is want to click on the source drive. And the reason for this is because we want to make sure that everything, including the partitions, are selected for a backup. When you click on it, you're going to come to this window. It gives you two choices. You can back up a disk or a partition, or you can even back up folders and files. For this demonstration, we're going to do disk and partitions. On the top, we have the selected drive. This is your primary drive, the C drive. If you have a different drive that you need to back up, then you can click the list here and it's going to show you all the available drives that are connected to your computer. For this demonstration, I have the disk number three selected. Now for this drive, you're going to see the partitions, how much space is on it, how much space is being used. And on the right, you're going to see a chat box. Now for any of these partitions that you want to back up, you want to make sure there is a chat mark beside each, in each box. Now, because this is going to be your first system backup, you want to make sure every partition on this disk is selected. Next, we have the schedule. Now, the schedule can be used if you want to automate the backup. For instance, you can choose daily, where you can choose a specific time and how frequent the backup is to occur. Weekly, you can choose a start time and the days of the week to create one. If you want to do monthly, you can choose the date, the monthly backup. Or if you have the Pro and Pro Ultimate versions, you can also choose an event, such as logging onto your computer or logging off the computer, and then it will create the backup. Next, we have the scheme. Now, the scheme, you may not have to worry about on the first backup, but just for this demonstration, I'm going to turn it on and select full. Now, the reason for this is because since this is the first backup, you want to make sure every single data is on the drive backed up. Now, as far as the incremental and differential is concerned, I will explain those later on in this video. Next item to check is the options. When you click options, this is the options that you want to do for this particular backup. Now, each backup that you do 
can be set differently based upon what the backup is needed for. Now at the top, you're gonna to see several options and I will go through all these options in a moment. The first one we're gonna look at is the backup image creation mode. Now what this does, it has two options. It will back up only the used sectors, meaning the sectors that contain data, or it can make an exact copy of the drive, copying the sector for sector, regardless if there's data stored in the sector or if there's no data stored in the sector, it will get copied. Now, for most of you, you can just use the only used sector backup. This will use the least amount of space and only backup data that's being used. Next, we have the file size. Now, the file size is not that important. Uh, you can use the default file size, uh, which depending on the drive or the flash that you're gonna use, will depend on how much data each file can be stored. For instance, if you're using like a standard USB flash drive, then it will break down each file into four gigabyte segments. Now for custom size, uh, if you wanna use a custom size, uh, you can choose any custom size that you want. Uh, for instance, let's say that you want to choose uh, each segment to be 100 gigabytes. Well, this will go up to 100 gigabytes and then split the backup and then create another uh, backup segment. Now, if you're going to use something like DVDs or CDs, then you can choose fixed size and then select what are you using, if it's a CD or a DVD. This way, the backup program knows when to break down and split the backups. Most cases, you can use default. Now, if you are gonna use CDs and DVDs, you wanna make sure you use the fixed size option. Next, we have compression. Compression reduces the file size, but it, will, it may create a longer time for it to back up. Now, by default, it's going to use medium. Now, it's going to use quite a bit of compression, but it's also going to minimize the time that it takes, but give you the maximum uh, compression for that feature. Now, if you don't want any compression, that's fine. Uh, it means that it won't compress any of the data, and it will be exactly as it is on the drive and backed up into the image. If you want to use high compression, uh, this is great if you have very little bit of space. Uh, this will compact the image as much as possible to help save space on the destination drive. Comment uh, is another option. Now this will come in handy because any backup you make, you can write a comment about the backup. For instance, let's say this is the uh, first backup. Anything that you want to write down, you can write down on this. Then that way you can go back and look at a particular backup and this will tell you a comment about that specific backup. Next, we have the email. Now what this does is if you're going to do a backup and you're going to go to work or step away, this will allow you to send an email. What this will do is send you an email to let you know when the backup has completed or if there was some kind of a problem. Next, we have the exclusion tab. Now, this tab uh, is for the Windows page file and the hibernation files. Now, these files do not need to be backed up. Now, you can if you want. Uh, it's not required. By default, it does exclude those, the Windows page file and the hibernation file from the backup. Next, we have shutdown. What this does is if you're going to be going away, uh, these backups can take anywhere between an hour to several hours to back up, depending on how much there is to back up. If you need to step away, which is fine, you don't have to stay at the computer when it does this, you can also have the program shut down the computer when it's finished. Next, we have the password. Now, what this will do is encrypt the data. When it backs up, this will create an encryption algorithm to protect your data. The only way that you're going to be able to access the data is if you know the password. 
You can also decide on the encryption to use. You can either use normal encryption or you can use 128-bit encryption. Last but not least, uh, we have the verified backup. Now, this is check, to check the integrity of the backup. This makes sure that everything that was backed up matches everything that was on the source. Now, this will add some significant time, but rest assured, it will um, approve and let you know if the backup was successful. So if you want to verify it, then choose, put a check mark in the box that says verify backup. Now that we have our scheduling, our scheme, and our options set, now we can choose when to back up. You can either back up now or you can back up later. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click back up now. Next, you have a window that will pop up and it's going to ask you, do you want to do the backup operation now? You'll choose yes. Once the process has, be has begun, you're going to see the tab open up. On the left, it's going to show you the drive to image. This is showing what it's going to be done and what it's going to be completed. On the right, this is going to be the destination and this is going to be the file name. And yes, I know it looks pretty large. Now on the right here, you're going to see where it says preparing. This means that it's uh, checking the data and seeing what it needs to do to create the uh, image. And on the right here, you can see the stop. This is where you can cancel or stop the backup process at any time. Now if you look, you'll notice up here it shows shut down the computer when all running backup tasks are completed. Uh, if you decide that you do want to shut the computer down, then go ahead and put a check mark in this box. When the backup is complete, the computer will shut down. Once the backup is complete, you'll see the window come back here and you'll see the drive to image. Uh, this will show you the recent backup on the top and it'll show you everything that was in part of that backup and the location of that backup. Under here, you'll see where it says the last latest backup. This is the last time that the backup was completed. On the right, you're going to see some options. So if you need to create another backup, it gives you options as to which backup you want to create. Over here, you can browse through the image. You can restore the image. Uh, you can mount the image so you can view everything that's inside the image. Uh, you can edit your scheme, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can also verify. Uh, anytime that you check on your backup image, you can always verify to make sure everything is intact. You also have a delete, so if it's an old backup you no longer need, then you can go ahead and delete it. Uh, you also can edit the scheduling, as we mentioned earlier, and you can also locate the image. Well, this concludes this video. Uh, this is showing you how to create your very first backup. Uh, stay tuned with some more videos to show you how to use the rest of the features of the program called Mini Tool Shadow Maker. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. Thank you for watching.